All right, since uh, April Fool's Day is in pissing distance, I figured I'd talk a little about pranks. Or more specifically, about a prank war between me and a few friends of mine. Now, this prank war all started with a Christmas tree. It was an old Christmas tree that my friend Steven had to get rid of. Now, instead of taking it to the curb like most people would, he decides to drive over to my house with it. He sees my car parked out in the street. It's totally unlocked. It's looking vulnerable. And he starts to thinking, hey, I wonder if this Christmas tree would fit in his car. So in broad daylight, he starts shoving this pine tree into my car. Nobody stops and asks him any questions. Hey, why are you doing that? That looks like a shitty thing to do. No, my roommate Brewer comes outside right in the middle of all this, and he sees Steven penetrating my car with this pine tree, and he's overjoyed. Because it's not his car after all. He doesn't care. I like what you're doing here. You are giving that car the business. So somehow, Steven manages to squeeze this dead pine tree into my tiny ass Chevy Cavalier like he's some kind of shitty David Copper field and a few hours go by and I walk out to my car I take one look at it and I'm like hey wait a minute something's different I don't remember putting a goddamn pine tree in my car part of me wasn't even mad you kind of have to be impressed that he actually got the tree to fit it had to be at the precise angle his ass had to be out there with a giant protractor or some shit that's pretty impressive but I tell you what's not impressive the eight million dead pine needles that are scattered throughout my car they're on the cup holder on the dashboard every time I sit down it feels like a small porcupines getting shoved up my ass now I gotta figure out how to get back at Steven. But before I get back at Steven, I decide to get my revenge on Brewer. Because after all, he could have blew the whistle on this whole operation. He could have at least shot me a text message. Like, hey dude, there's a Christmas miracle happening outside if you want to come check it out. But no, he didn't do that. So I form a little posse. They have a couple people come over and we decide to try to duct tape Brewer's bed to the ceiling. Now, I don't know if you've ever attempted such an ambitious maneuver, but taping a bed to a ceiling is a little difficult. You have to have three people standing on chairs holding the bed up to the ceiling, box spring and all, while one person goes around and tapes everything. We use three rolls of duct tape on this goddamn thing, and it just wouldn't stay. God damn it. Well, I guess we're gonna have to use plan B. Plan B was we're just gonna steal his bed and hide it somewhere. And then since we're so goddamn funny, we're gonna put a piece of bread where his bed used to be, and then we're gonna drive to his work and leave a note in his car. And the note says, you look tired, go to bread. God damn it, we are comedic geniuses. Now, I can only imagine the look on his face when he read that weird cryptic ass message that we left in there. You look tired, go to bread. What in tarnation does that mean? But I'm sure it made perfect sense when he he got home and had to go on a shitty little scavenger hunt for his bed. But you bet your ass he did find it because a slice of Wonder Bread makes a shitty place to sleep. Okay, cross Brewer off the list, now on to Steven. But before I could get back at Steven, for whatever reason my friend Cody decides to throw his hat in the ring. He wants to get involved in this prank war. So the next day I'm at work making pizzas and Cody shows up and he wants a pizza. So I make him a nice little pizza and I don't even spit in it because I'm a gentleman, what can I say? But before he leaves, he decides he's gonna go to my car and he's gonna draw a big old wiener on my back windshield with window chalk. So a few hours go by and I leave for work and I'm totally oblivious. Hell, it's not until I'm in the middle of traffic at a red light when I look in my rear view mirror and notice it. What in tarnation is that? Oh man, it's a big dingus. Everybody on the street can see it. People are honking their horns and shit. Hey, that's quite the wiener decal you got there. Ah. Uh, Thank you. I drove all the way home with a wiener on my car, looking like a NASCAR that's sponsored by Wieners Incorporated. Okay, looks like Cody's name's going on the shit list. I call him up in the middle of the night. I'm gonna get you back. You're not gonna know when, and you're not gonna know how, but I'm gonna get you back. You drew a wiener on my car, and you soiled my reputation, goddammit, I'm gonna get you! But Cody was easy to get back. All I had to do was get some window chalk of my own, and write, I drink pee on his bumper, right before he'd leave work. I did that sporadically for like a month. I also wrote shit on Brewer's car too, because because, uh, well, what the hell, why not? Okay, so back to revenge on Steven. Because after all, he's the one that started this whole goddamn mess. Having the 12 days of Christmas in my Cavalier. So me and Brewer are sitting there one night thinking, well, what's worse than drawing a big wiener on his car? How about drawing a thousand tiny wieners on his car? That is a great idea. You are a goddamn genius. So that was the plan. Me, Brewer, his girlfriend, and my cousin David were all gonna sneak over to Steven's house at 2 in the morning. And by golly, we're gonna draw as many wieners as we can on his Ford Contour. So we're out there sneaking around in the dark like SEAL Team 6 markers in hand ready to draw some wieners and there's his car 
looking vulnerable just like mine was. So we get to wiener drawing. Some of them have smiley faces, some of them look like they've been hit by a car. In 15 minutes, we covered every square inch of that car with a phallus. Job well done, gang. Let's hit the road. The morning rolls around, and Steven's uncle pulls up in front of the house. He's the first one that gets to lay eyes on the uh, wiener mobile parked out front. Oh my god. What kind of shit is my nephew getting himself involved in? He goes inside and tells Steven's mom, Hey, there's a bunch of wieners on your son's car. What? Steve's car, there's a bunch of dicks all over it. Like, like severed dicks? No, no, Jesus Christ, they're drawings. Not a bunch of cut off dicks all over his car. What the hell's the matter with you? That morning was the morning that Steven had to get up and scrub a thousand wieners off his car. And I take great pride in that. I feel like that's ample revenge for what he did. Hey, that's quite a bunch of wieners on your car there. Yeah, I'm aware. Thank you. My favorite part of the story is that six days later, Steven's at the gas station filling up his car, and he looks over to his gas tank, and he sees one little wiener that he missed with a little message that says, insert here. Oh, god damn it. Brostew.com